How is Apijet being used at the moment to help with the coronavirus fight? It's not being used at the moment because we've never had to have this kind of surge capacity. Essentially, up to now, we've seen the problem in masks and protective gear and ventilators. That's the first surge. When we have a therapeutic drug or a vaccine, we're going to have another surge. We're not going to be able to put drugs in these glass vials fast enough. It simply can't be done. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to put it in plastic vials where the U.S. government has said we can do emergency work at enormously high speed. That's exactly what Appyject is about. It's about a supply chain problem. Yes. We won't be able to do it without some complete changeover in the drug packaging supply chain. Now, in a public-private partnership, as they're calling it, Jeffries is seeding you $10 million, but hoping that that will be a billion dollars, trying to get some clients involved, potentially. I mean, how is that going? How is the raise going? Well, we're just beginning. In a public-private partnership, you're bringing the power of the government to bear which is a prioritization, the use of the FDA, the use of the resources, and you bring the private sector in so together we can get it done. You're going to have to build up to 30 filling lines and you're going to have to do it fast. We're just beginning to raise the private capital, but with the green light from the government picking this technology as the priority, we're going to be off to the races to get this going. Jay, something interesting about this venture is that you actually were in talks with HS, HHS well before the pandemic even started sweeping the nation and the world. How much were you and how much were, was HHS already aware that this type of pandemic would be such a threat? HHS is always planning ahead. The Assistant Secretary of Preparedness, that's the, his whole job and his whole function. They've been working on pandemic flu. And so when they approached us, when they saw this technology, they said, we could use this if the flu virus mutated. Who knew at the time that the, uh, the coronavirus was going to be just around the corner? So the government gets real credit here. They put together the public-private partnership to get ready for a flu pandemic. Suddenly, the coronavirus jumps on the scene, and now they've accelerated it massively and said, go as fast as you can. We're going to need to package therapies this summer and a vaccine sometime next year. We could need up to a billion packages like this to give everybody in the United States at least two injections and maybe more. The game here is volume and speed, right. Right. and that's what's got to happen. Jay, you work with so many different drug providers right now. What is your expectation on the best case and the worst case scenarios on how soon a therapy can be made available? The best scientists currently believe we will find a therapy by this summer that's a combination of one or more current drugs like in a cocktail. And so I expect and believe that by this summer, we will have something to blunt the death rate. That's the goal. We'll need tens of millions of doses because we're going to have millions of cases. But at the end of the day, we have a lot of reason to be hopeful on a therapy. A vaccine, that's trickier because a vaccine you have to inject in everybody, which means you have to be absolutely sure it's safe as opposed to people who are trying to, you know, recover from an infection. That we're hoping for the middle to end of next year. Okay, say that happens, Jay. We get that vaccine coming through. How quickly can the whole process uh, be put into place to get those vaccines out? Just kind of give me a timeline of of kind of, I discover it on day one, by, by day plus what will I start to see vaccines going out of the door in significant numbers? So how it works, Guy, is simply this. Vaccines are candidates, just like candidates for president. There's a lot of them, right? You put them through a process. Only after phase two of that process, which will be this summer, do you say, okay, we're pretty sure it works. Now we've got to make sure it doesn't hurt people as much as it helps people. That's the long pole in the tent. However, you start to manufacture volumes of that vaccine in the, in the hope that it will pass those tests so that when you're ready, you have big vats of vaccine. Those big vats still have to get into an injection format or you can't get it into people. Vaccines don't save lives. Vaccinations yep. save lives. That's the bottleneck in the supply chain. What's the difference between in vitro and plastic? In vitro just means that you're doing it in a dish. 
Plastic actually is the packaging technology. When people say they're doing something in vitro, it means they're doing it in a petri dish, which is into an animal or into a human. Packaging is how you actually take the drug. You can put drugs in glass or you can put drugs in plastic. The beauty is if you do it this way, you can make this part of the container at very high speed, literally 10 million a day. You attach a needle hub, much like an insulin needle hub, and suddenly you have an injection device that anybody can use immediately everywhere. That's the innovation that the public-private partnership is bringing out. Jay, prior to Vani's point as well, you did partner with Jeffries on this initiative. You're looking to raise a billion dollars from private investors as well. Is this venture, as you are moving so quickly to deploy resources, going to be profitable for those new investors? We honestly don't know, but what we do know is long term, you need plastic packaging. So even if we don't make money initially, that's not important because long term, you're going to need plastic packaging. Right now, we are focused entirely on getting the capacity built up and running, which is why we've created a public benefit corporation right from the start. We know this is the time for everybody to come together and step up. It's not about profits. It's about scale and making it work.